So good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Town of Walpole Open Space and Recreation Plan virtual community meeting uh, this evening on October 1st. Uh, my name is Josh Fiella. I'm a principal planner at the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, MAPC. We've been working closely with the Town of Walpole over the last year or so uh, to prepare this Open Space and Recreation Plan. So we're very excited that you're all with us this evening and excited uh, if you're watching along uh, on the video at a later date. So just so everyone's aware, I, I'm, I'm obligated to say these things by our uh, council at our office, but uh, the meeting is being recorded. Uh, so if you wish to not participate in the recording, you can either leave the meeting or keep yourself muted and uh, turn your video off. Uh, otherwise that we're, we're viewing your participation as consent to be recorded. Uh, so as we move into the presentation, let me just tell you what we have on the agenda for this evening. So I'll be giving a brief presentation uh, to provide some background on the OSRP process, the Open Space and Recreation Plan process, uh, providing a recap of the community feedback. This is the uh, final community meeting, but there have been other uh, community engagement efforts along the way in this process, which I'll explain. Uh, then get into the draft contents of the plan, highlighting the seven-year action plan of the document. And then we'll have an opportunity for questions and comments this evening. Uh, and then also I'll let you know about other ways to provide comments on the document, which is in draft form currently. Uh, and then we'll also have uh, one quick exercise uh, this evening where you can let us know if, if we should reorder or reprioritize the goals of the seven year action plan as they're written in the plan today. So uh, thank you for being here again. Uh, we're happy to have you all with us. I think the big news, uh, the big take home message from this evening is that the draft OSRP is available for review. It's on the, the Towns Conservation Commission webpage. Uh, it is a draft document. Uh, we're trying to promote it as a draft document and get as many uh, individuals from the town uh, who are interested in it to take a look at it, uh, give it a quick review if you have thoughts um, about how the document could be improved or made better or more accurate. We're happy to hear that and accept comments. Um, the meeting this evening is opening a 30-day comment period. We'll effectively have a comment period for the month of October. Um, and, and you're uh, allowed to uh, send comments in. I'll, I'll provide the information on how to do that later in this presentation. So thank you for that. So let, just before we get to uh, the document itself, I wanted to give a brief introduction on the open space plan and what this all means. So open space in general refers to uh, conservation land, forested land, recreation land, uh, effectively uh, almost all the lands which don't have uh, buildings or other improvements on them. Uh, it also includes wetland, natural features, green buffers, etc. The term can also uh, just refer to vacant or undeveloped yeah. lands, whether they are uh, owned by the town or not owned by the town, and they may or may not have conservation or recreation potential. So it's everything that you kind of would view out of your car window and think, oh, that's, that's an open space, then uh, that is probably being considered under this effort. Um, open space varies, so uh, we're looking at both, uh, I would say, focused in this effort on town-owned open space, but also looking at private open spaces as well. And then uh, they also vary by their level of protection uh, and their use, of course. So there's a variety of what's being uh, covered when we talk about open space and plan for it. On those open spaces, there's a variety of recreation uh, that occurs in types of recreation. So that can either be generally categorized as passive or active recreation at its very highest level. And you can see examples of those two. Generally passive recreation requires minimal facilities or improvements. It can occur in any of those, uh, really any of the conservation lots uh, to, um, that, that are there available for hiking, running, walking, cross country skiing. And then the more active recreation involves uh, improvements that typically facilitate uh, structured activities. So those are the playgrounds, the sports and ball fields, swimming pools, and other amenities uh, which are available in the town. So 
why, why would the, uh, a town or municipality complete an OSRP plan? They, they frequently happen throughout the region. It's, it's a service our um, regional agency uh, provides to many municipalities. Um, and many of the reasons are shown on the slide here, foremost being the, 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 uh, the need to plan uh, actively for recreation and open space. It doesn't occur uh, without planning uh, and you have to be thoughtful and careful about how those amenities are tracking with the needs of the community and think about how those needs might be changing over the next uh, period of time. Uh, op open space and recreation plans typically um, consider seven year time periods. That's the um, sort of standard that by which they are measured. Um, and they're always produced with the help of the community um, to really understand the resources and the needs that are, are available. Uh, and this is all about stewardship. So it's stewardship of the natural resources, stewardship of those um, recreation and open space needs of the community. And then another big item which an OSRP provides for the, the town is making it eligible to apply for state grants. So those grants are available through the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, among others. Uh, and those, can, those funds can be used for a variety of open space improvements or to acquire and um, acquire additional land for conservation or recreation purposes. Oh, and by the way, well, well let's go back to that slide for a second. The image that you see on the, the slide here is, is an excerpt from the previous OSRP effort, which was completed in 2011. Um, so that you can see that the town of Walpole is, is due uh, as measured from that seven year cycle. The plan has been closely guided uh, and we're very fortunate to have, have been involved with the core team of town leadership that you see on the screen. Uh, Landis Hershey has been our, our closest coordinator the conservation agent, conservation agent of the town. Um, and you know, we've been very thankful for their guidance because of course the, the local knowledge uh, in terms of these open spaces and the needs is, is much deeper and stronger than, than we can hope to provide. Uh, and then we've been providing at our agency uh, support to structure the process, building on our experience with other open space and recreation plans and providing uh, background analysis and data analysis to uh, support this process. And then other members of uh, town boards and committees critical to open space and recreation have been involved in that process as well, uh, including uh, the town administrator uh, leading our effort uh, and the town's coordinating uh, activities. So thank you all for your involvement. I see many of you involved in this meeting this evening as well. So I'll just run through uh, some of the previous involvement of the community to date. So uh, just about a year ago, not quite a year ago, we had a kickoff community meeting at the front end of this process. Um, and that had uh, 15 or so attendees and was really structuring the beginning, uh, kind of getting as much information as we could gather from attendees that evening to kick us off uh, and get a, a feel for where this process should be headed. In, in about the middle of the process, uh, we had uh, an online community survey hosted uh, through Qualtrics, which is a survey provider. Um, and that was up from February through March of 2020 and received a good number of responses, 375 responses. And then here we are this evening uh, at a, co a community meeting, which is sort of at the, towards the end of this process, though not completely at the end. Um, so that's a nice sort of bookends and, and the uh, part of the story with that community survey. Things that occurred in the first community meeting were exercises like a strengths, weakness, and opportunity threat analysis, so a SWOT analysis. You can see some of the results of that analysis here. Um, and we've really tried to um, take all of this community input and feedback and integrate it into the recommendations of the plan. I'll just uh, skip through quickly some of the community survey responses. Uh, I'm sure that uh, some of you interested members on the uh, in the meeting this evening probably participated in the community survey so it'd be interesting for you to see some of these results um, but preserving Walpole's open space and natural areas is important to me was a statement that many uh, members of those 375 participants strongly or agree with hardly any disagreement there um, Walpole's existing open space and recreational amenities contribute positively to the overall quality of life in the town again pretty strong agreement and, and 
either in strongly agree or agree with that statement. So you're seeing the, again, justification for going through a process uh, that we've undertaken. Then Walpole needs to proactively plan for the recreational needs of its residents. Again, uh, strong agreement and agreement. Um, not, not much there, by the way, of strongly or strongly disagreeing or disagreeing with those. And then the survey also included, and this isn't a comprehensive uh, uh, sampling of the results, uh, but uh, it asked people how frequently they visit uh, a variety of the uh, open space and conservation and recreation areas in the town. So Adams Farm, for example, gets a fair amount of visitation, um, anywhere between 10 plus visits a year from participants down to one to three. We can see it's, it's a fair amount of visitation. It looked like Bird Park from the survey is, is one of the most uh, visited and frequently visited uh, parks in the uh, town and it makes makes a good deal of sense why that's uh, a great resource and then other resources like Cedar Swamp and Clark's Pond are, are also getting a fair amount of visitation though not as regularly and frequently as, as the bird park of course and then there are some other resources which which fall down um, a little bit less frequently visited the Indian Plimpton Trail um, you see on the bottom of that bar that the unaware of the amenity pops up a little bit more than some of the others. Uh, so it points to the need for potentially some outreach about some of the trails and resources in the town. Uh, Jarvis Farm is getting some decent visitation. Uh, Memorial Pond right at the center of the community with the recent dredging project is getting uh, decent visitation. And then areas like the Mine Brook Conservation Area, again, people are, are a little less aware of. Um, that as an amenity that could be utilized. And this was, this was really a focal point of the survey data and, and a uh, major structuring aspect uh, for the plan. And this was a, a um, ranking and prioritization of a variety of uh, open space and recreation uh, statements and goals. And you can see the top five here, which really are, are integrated into the recommendations of the plan. Uh, promotion of awareness of open space amenities through education um, <clears throat> and outreach was number one. Uh, so that's the, you know, most people, 87% thought that was either most important or, or important. Uh, continuing the current recreation programming in the parks and making sure that those um, programs continue to match the needs. I think they're well matched today. And then, uh, you know, as, as needs adjust in the future, we'll continue uh, to provide those services as needed. Planting more trees uh, is another need that was identified as number three. Improvement of existing playing fields. Uh, so there's been a fair amount of activity in terms of new playing fields and uh, implementation of the 2008 athletic fields master plan. Uh, but then I think turning towards improvement of the existing playing fields was identified as a need. And then improvement and maintenance of existing off-road trails that rounds out the top five. You can see some of the answers uh, that flow down from there. Um, and each of these we've tried to find a place for in the master or in the open space and recreation plan. And then just to round out a little bit about the, the respondents themselves and some of the demographic information that was collected. So you can see that the um, respondents uh, there was a diversity in terms of the age range. So um, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, and 60 and older were the most represented. But that's a good cross section, I think, of the population that, that really is focused on um, the open space and recreation provisions in the town. And then it was important to also know um, which of the households and respondents um, have um, household members of special needs related to open space or recreation. So that would be children, of course, uh, and also seniors, and then uh, people with a disability. Um, and so each of those uh, were responded, there's a vast number, uh, almost 200 of those 375 with children under 18. So we got a good sampling of those perspectives, but then also did get some um, households that were re representing the other populations as well. And then how long have you lived in Walpole? And I think that's a good, a good cross section too, both between newcomers, um, legacy residents and the uh, in between. So uh, you can see all of those areas 
and, and a diversity of uh, viewpoints represented. So I just wanna walk through a little bit the draft plan contents and give an orientation to those. And then you can dig in, uh, in into the details with the draft document yourself. And we'll welcome that over the next 30 days uh, for everyone to take a close look. So you can see how the, the plan is laid out. And this is all uh, based upon the state standards for an open space and recreation plan. So these are relatively um, defined, there's actually an open space and recreation um, plan workbook that is defined at the state level. So these sections follow along with that and are, are making sure to comply with all the requirements so that the open space and recreation plan will qualify the town uh, for those grant resources. So um, section one is, is a plan summary. It really is you know, a very brief executive summary type um, section. The section two gives an introduction to what this is all about, very similar to the content of the presentation introduction that I just gave. Section three is about the community setting. So that's um, looking a little bit broader than just open space and recreational resources, but thinking about the demographics, the environmental justice populations, um, what's happening with housing and housing production, development pressure in the town, development patterns over the town's history, uh, those types of considerations which relate to uh, patterns of open space and recreation. And then an environmental inventory and analysis looks at um, any of the environmental features. So looking at uh, geology, um, topography, um, any sort of significant landmarks or features, scenic resources, um, habitats and um, uh, you know, wildlife and animal features, uh, those sorts of things. So that, that gives you a nice survey of the natural aspects of the community. And then section five, I think is a very useful inventory of conservation and recreation lands uh, within the town. And that provides a um, spatial, a map uh, of that inventory and also a table of that inventory, uh, which would be useful in the outreach that was mentioned in, in one of the uh, priorities from the survey. And then the community vision articulates what, what has been gleaned from uh, these, these participation points and also from the, the core team's um, participation and conversation about what, you know, where, where is uh, the vision um, for what, what needs to happen with the town open space and recreation lands. Um, and then uh, adding a little more detail to that in section seven, with an, an analysis of the needs, which builds off of other recent documents um, and things like the athletic fields master plan. Uh, and then finally, section eight is, is really the, the um, heart of the recommendations where we outline the goals and objectives that respond to all of the information that is articulated in those first seven sections. And then that is, is given detail um, in the last section, which is a seven year action plan. And that seven year action plan uh, tries to break down the goals and objectives into um, both att uh, attainable and achievable um, goals with responsible parties and timeframes, uh, sorry, not goals, actions uh, with, attain with responsible parties and timeframes for each of those actions. Um, so, it, so it goes from sort of a high level framing all the way down to the details and hopefully gives the town something that's meaningful in terms of advancing those open space and recreation goals. There is also an appendix, uh, which is also uh, in draft form and available on the, uh, with the plan on the Conservation Commission's webpage. And that um, appendix uh, covers uh, documenting the input that we've heard along the ways uh, uh, through that process, the notes that have been gathered, um, but it also includes a, a full accounting of the community survey, which I just shared portions uh, with you now, and a, um, a ADA, American with Disabilities Act um, accessibility self-evaluation uh, which involves uh, reviewing each of the um, open space and recreation areas of the town for um, accessibility features and provides an action plan around making some improvements in that regard. Oh, should have skipped my slide. I thought, I thought I'd put a slide in there. there okay. 
So that, those are the contents of the appendix. So I just talked through the uh, seven year action plan highlights and give you a feel for um, what's in the plan itself and the recommendations. So the first goal is to protect and improve the quality of Walpole's surface and groundwater. And that's been a focus of the town uh, you know, for a good deal of time uh, and I think continues to be a focus and, and was something that the, the town has on its um, list of priorities and that we heard a lot about wanting to maintain and continue those efforts. So you can see some of the example or the objectives underneath that goal that help to provide some detail um, and further uh, uh, explain what's being intended there. Um, so that, that involves protecting the groundwater supply, groundwater recharge areas, watershed protection districts, uh, and ensuring that the town has sufficient quantities and quality of safe drinking water. And then there are some examples of the types of actions that are that fall within that objective. And again, with the enhancement of the town's ability to protect rivers, streams, ponds, floodplains, and other land important to the water quality and wildlife habitat. And you can see some of the actions which are given here in summary form. Uh, and of course, I've left off the uh, responsible parties and time frames and such. The second goal uh, is to protect and encourage preservation of the town's natural and cultural resources. And so that's uh, preservation through acquisition and or regulatory strategies uh, for unique and ecologically valuable and significant land areas. Uh, so you can see some of the ideas there uh, that are actions underneath that. And also encouraging the preservation and conservation of agricultural parcels and large forested parcels, which still do remain in the town. Uh, and that's working with partners such as the Norfolk Aggie School and other strategies. And then identifying and protecting wildlife habitats and corridors, particularly those of endangered and threatened species and those uh, species have been identified in the report uh, in that environmental analysis section four. You can, can see some of the actions underneath that objective. This goal continues on to a few other objectives uh, relating to preserving the town's heritage and character through preservation of scenic roads, uh, structures and of historic significance. And that gets uh, a little bit um, into an area tangential to the open space and recreation areas, but still I think valid and important here. So defining and advancing local historic districts, uh, promoting the public awareness of scenic roads bylaw, which does exist uh, and the special uh, rules and regulations which go along with it. And then identifying priority structures for preservation and pursuing the historic designations for those structures. And then the next two objectives under the second goal acquiring additional conservation lands, easements and restrictions adjacent to existing town owned open space. So uh, lands that might be uh, not as e easily ac accessed today because of their location or position. Um, and then also thinking about ways to uh, expand sort of contiguous land areas under conservation uh, or town um, control. And then lastly, working with federal, state, local and private parties to clean up identified brownfields and other contaminated lands and ensure that future contamination does not occur. And that, that those have been, um, there's been efforts in the town uh, in that regard in the past. And there's, there's still um, some sites for that work to continue upon. But things like uh, using brownfield sites for solar energy, uh, that's, that's a sort of an, a growing area which would have great benefits to the town in terms of um, renewable energy production, but also uh, uses which are um, potentially complementary to other open space and recreation activities. The third goal, and there, there are five goals, just to give you a little bit of a check-in here where we are. So the third goal is to maintain and manage existing town open space land. So this is uh, really about the, the notion that the feedback that we heard wasn't necessarily about the um, priority to uh, 
gather more and more lands or that there was a view that there was a, a, um, a lack of lands, but that um, with the lands that are currently under the control of the town and available, uh, a renewed focus on the management um, and, and um, maintenance of those properties and lands. So the first uh, objective was to develop management plans for all town ponds and town owned open space uh, and best practices, which would go along with those management plans. Then develop a plan for educational programs and access. So uh, expanding the awareness of these resources and getting more uh, town members to participate in their use and their care, uh, specifically through signage maps and other awareness programs. Uh, and then providing a budget to maintain and manage existing town open space properties. And that's something that we've seen, um, you know, progress being made, but there's, there's a continued need for that. Uh, although we, we do understand the context of town budgets in the current COVID times and the difficulties there. And then a few other objectives under this goal uh, to forge private, nonprofit, and public partnerships to help with the management and maintenance of open space properties, including both active and passive recreational areas. So that might include groups which already exist or partners which already exist. The Norfolk Aggie I've mentioned might be one of those type of partners or supporting the um, development and promotion of friends of groups who are often excellent nonprofit partners who can fill some gaps uh, in terms of the municipal services or, or um, the ability to provide some of those additional outreach or uh, signage type efforts as well. Uh, the next objective uh, I think is an important one as well, connecting existing and potential open space with trails, sidewalks and bicycle paths. So increasing accessibility uh, through these multimodal connections, thinking about ways to um, provide meaningful access from all parts of the town, um, you know, that isn't necessarily dependent on a vehicle to get there. Um, that, that I think would open up a whole uh, area of positive uh, use and growth for um, the open space and recreation lands and conservation lands. And then uh, the last objective in this goal, develop methods to restrict use of motorized vehicles on town open space properties other than town authorized vehicles and some actions under that objective. The fourth goal of the five is to continue to expand recreational facilities to provide a wide variety of active recreation opportunities to encourage a healthy and active community. Um, this, this is a, a goal which has seen a lot of progress recently um, with implementation of the Athletic Fields Master Plan. Uh, and this is really sort of a, continue, a continuation of that effort and looking at um, some of the things that which are still left to be done. Um, the first objective here is to continue to implement the goals of the trails master plan and revisions. Um, so looking at installation of trail marking systems, again, supporting those volunteer efforts for, for, for uh, individuals or groups who want to maintain or forge new trails on some of those conservation lands which are less accessible today. Continuing to implement the goals of the 2008 Master, athletic Fields Master Plan, um, looking at things like the field use policies and procedures and enforcement of those policies to maintain those field conditions now that they uh, have been improved, uh, setting aside funds and time to renovate existing facilities to complement those new facilities, and then increasing the town budget, which has been called for in, in those planning efforts, uh, and looking at additional ways to get the um, condition of those fields through irrigation and other measures um, to a really uh, usable uh, and well, well used place. Then uh, the third objective here under this goal is to encourage public nonprofit and private partnerships and plan and development of outdoor recreational facilities. So there are some recreational facilities which are not town owned um, and those could be potential ways to expand the available um, uh, fields for use. And then lastly, uh, looking at encouraging multiple uses of recreation and conservation facilities through coordinated efforts of schools, various town departments, and private organizations. So this may include um, 
scheduling procedures, um, maximizing coordination of shared facilities, and just making sure that each of those processes are optimizing um, field use um, and, and making sure that um, as much efficiency of use out of the resources is, is completed. Then lastly, maintain and manage the existing recreational facilities. And so we're looking at uh, things like providing adequate resources and management for the maintenance of parks and recreation facilities. And that's looking at the um, maintenance procedures and operations and getting them uh, written into maintenance standards um, that, and then a town budget that would be um, sufficient for each of those standards to be carried out. Um, and then building staff capacity to support that as well. Educating the public on outdoor opportunities currently available in Walpole. That ties to some of the other uh, objectives that we've mentioned here, but we, we saw it as really the number one priority from the survey responses and it shows up in the survey of open space usage as well, that that's a need. And then developing a plan for making existing as well as new play fields um, ADA accessible as required. And then the self evaluation that I mentioned is in the appendix of the document provides uh, concrete um, ways uh, on each, each of the uh, investigated open space and recreation areas on how that could be achieved and steps to take that on. So with that, um, we did want to leave time. We, we said this was about an hour meeting, so we've got a, a half hour or so uh, for comments. We don't need to spend that long if we don't have too many comments, but we'll, we'll allow um, comments and questions of any of the content that I've just walked through. But before we do that, I, I wanted to invite everyone to participate in a little bit different way. Um, and if you can, if you're at your computer, um, if you could open up a internet browser window, and if in that browser window, you could go to pollev.com, so P-O-L-L-E-V.com slash M-A-P-C-M-T-G, that will connect you to an interactive polling function, uh, which will show up on the next slide. And let me just type this into the um, chat function here so that people can just click on it if they see that as an easier way to connect. So if you click on the, if you open up the chat in the Zoom and you click on that link, it should take you straight there. And now let's see if we can get this to work with the interactive. All right, so hopefully in theory, you all should be able to see the responses. But the question here is simply, um, given those five goals, which I've just outlined for everyone that are in the OSRP draft, um, the, the order that they are shown in, the one, two, three, four, five, is the order that they currently are shown within the plan. But we did want to invite some feedback on that. And if you think the priorities should be made different, you can actually use the polling interface, which I've shared, to move those around uh, and rank them in different order. If, if you like them in the same order that we've presented them, then you can, um, they might show up on your screen random, in a randomized order. So you might need to move them back into the order to show your preference. Um, but if you do like the current uh, rank order uh, would match with your priorities, then you can move them back into the appropriate one, two, three, four, five. Um, and then that should show up on the screen if, if anyone is able to do that. Oh, there we go. Oh, sorry, I just did that. So let me see if I can get it back. Okay, so it looks like so far, and we, we'll let people, give people a couple more minutes to keep voting, but the, uh, looks like potentially there might be a little bit of a reordering that people might desire with goal number two. Can you all see this, by the way? I can see it on my screen. Can you see the responses? Okay, I see some heads nodding. So it looks like goal number two might wanna be goal number one. And goal number three might wanna be goal number two. And then that would move goal number one down to number three. And then four and five can probably stay 
in their current order. So that's an that's interesting feedback to receive. Um, so it looks like we're not getting any more movement on this. So maybe, oh, a little bit more. So I'll just give people one last chance to participate if, if they would like to. Great, well, thank you for that. I, I always, we're, we're, as planners, we're always itching to get people involved in these Zoom meetings somehow. So this has been one way to do that. So I appreciate people playing along with the Pull Everywhere um, interface here. So the other way, of course, is I'll uh, just open it up and pause with my speaking and we'll have to um, unmute people. So maybe if you'd like to ask a question or provide a comment, um, you can use the raise your hand function if you know about that. Um, you can also uh, just maybe chat us in the group chat and then we can unmute you. But it doesn't look like we actually have that many. Um, we're not that, we've got a small group and not at that much of a risk for Zoom bombing it would appear at this point. So let me just unmute everyone and that might make it easier as well. All right, so everyone now should have the ability to unmute themselves. So if they would like to unmute themselves, it looks like Glenn, you also have your hand up. So I will call on you, Glenn, and you can unmute yourself. Hey, Josh, thanks, appreciate it. Um, just looking at the plan, it's a really good plan and, and thanks for your leadership in getting us through the past year and getting us to this point. And I think it's gonna be really good, especially because in the next uh, year or two, there's no definitive date on it. But I think I've heard the master plan is gonna be something that gets funded by the town and moves forward. So this will be instrumental in, um, in edifying for those people who are involved in the master plan, which would be more all encompassing, of course. Um, so this is great. Um, just one thing that, uh, that it's more of, a, of an issue for me that's a little overwhelming is, is we talk about uh, one of the goals of this plan is to open up access to um, grants. And it seems to me that there's a never ending like sea of grants out there and and I could do a Google search all day and I and I pop up you know um, the Mass Land and Water Conservation Fund which is something that the Board of Sioux and Water looked at to help protect our water supply. Um, there are probably trail marking grants that's a smaller sort of thing the, the Mass Wildlife Land Acquisition Grant but those are just like quick Google searches and I wonder if there's like a master list of, of grants and grant opportunities that we could have it doesn't mean we apply to them all, but like, it would be nice to know what's available. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Glenn. Thanks for that. Um, I, I'll ask my colleagues. I don't know of one readily available. I think maybe at MAPC, we've done some of that ourselves just for the purpose of, of the plan support that we provide. Um, but I don't know of a um, broader state resource which has done that on a, on a easily accessible website, which is a shame because it sounds like a great idea. But let me... Um, ask colleagues, and then I can get that information back out to people to help, hopefully help facilitate the grant pursuit that would, would be um, potentially um, related to some of the actions. Although, though I will, I will mention that we tried to set it up so that not all the actions that we've listed are require external funding. Some of them are, I think, perfectly suitable to be achieved through um, staff effort with the town staff or um, through staff you know, would be modest enough for staff funding as well. Yeah. And there's probably some institutional knowledge within town hall that if we ask the right departments, Landis, you know, comes to mind that uh, she could point me in the right direction. Yeah, in fact, I, I thought at one point I've seen a list of, you know, sort of environmental related grants, but I couldn't at this point tell you where and or how, um, but I'll think about that as well, Glenn. So I guess while I have your attention, I do just want to make another quick comment. Um, and this is more just of, of what's important to me. Um, and I, if I could just call your attention, I know you kind of help put the port, report together, but just section seven analysis of needs. And I know Josh, you and I talked about this behind the scenes a little bit, but I just wanted to, to bring it up again. Um, it's just some ideas that are very specific and concrete and 
for lack of a better word, cool. Um, and, and it's the, the idea of um, creating linear parks in Walpole, uh, rail trail connections uh, where they don't currently exist, but there are opportunities. Um, some of them are um, a split, you know, with private land kind of having private development sort of having split, you know, previous rail connections, but that's not the case in all cases. And, um, and there's a, just in page 58, um, you, I'm just going to kind of quote you, you, there are several other great opportunities to create linear parks or rail trail connections, um, specifically the Framingham and Foxborough line, which is an active um, train line. Um, but the idea here is that you can actually create a linear rail trail, not on the trail itself, but parallel to the trail in a safe way, presumably, you know, separated by a, a fence and, and other security to keep people safe. But, you know, to actually build a rail trail, if there's enough land next to an existing freight line or, you know, a somewhat moderately used um, rail trail, that um, trail, I'm sorry, train line, then that would potentially allow us to go to Walpole train station, instead of getting on a train, actually walking to Gillette Stadium for a football game or a soccer game, or just to, you know, a, a bike ride, just to get out and, and to get there without having to walk on Route 1. And it's just really kind of a cool idea. I hadn't heard of it and thought of it and didn't even know it was potentially an option. And it's kind of cool that it is. So I just wanted to call attention to that. Um, real quick, the, uh, the Walpole Rentham line. Uh, there's, a, there's a group of private citizens um, that are looking to connect a rail line all the way from Attabo that would actually end at the current under construction uh, ball fields across from on Route 1A, across from the prison. So that's one, I mean, that's a cool thing that, that could happen. There are no sort of um, disruptions there. And then to continue it would be more difficult. Um, but that's just another, there's a couple of things that are pretty exciting and very specific and um, just wanted to mention them. Great, thank, thank you for that, Glenn. I think that's, those are really uh, excellent things to point out. I will take this opportunity to, to actually plug a, a complementary plan that I think um, where some of those ideas um, actually came from too, which is uh, the MAPC has a regional uh, multimodal network, which has been sort of planned out conceptually and is called the landline. And there's a landline plan which has been led by uh, an MAPC transportation planner named David Lautzenheiser. And he has uh, spent a lot of time in all 101 communities that comprise our region uh, and actually thought about all, all of those great ideas of how you can actually add multimodal corridors uh, that make sense, places where there's actually potential for that. And then he's followed a lot of those through over the years to implementation. So he's a great resource, Glenn. I know that we've We've talked about him as a resource um, for the town of Walpole. Um, but I think, yeah, some of those ideas about those corridors are really fantastic ways to transform the great assets you already have and, and make them completely different for the next generation in terms of access by bike, access by walking or jogging. So it's a fantastic approach. Any other uh, thoughts or questions or comments? We've still got a few more minutes for those. Hi, it's Jim. Um, just a question, what's the next steps from here? Just so people on this call kind of get a sense of where we're going next. Yes, great question. I even got a slide for it. So the um, next steps, uh, as I mentioned, we're really uh, kicking off a public comment period with the presentation this evening. So that public comment period will be for about 30 days, though we'll probably just call it the month of October since we'll be pretty near then. Um, and then uh, with the comments, so really please do, we invite anyone uh, who's watching tonight or watching the recording to grab the plan and the appendix, take a look through, let us know any comment, no matter how big or small, uh, and we'll consider those comments and then integrate those comments into a final OSRP. Um, once complete, the plan will be submitted to the Division of Conservation Services. They are the state agency that approves OSRPs. And typically, um, no matter how good a plan is, they will, they will return back to us, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of eight or 10 comments uh, that will then need to be integrated from their perspective. Uh, but usually when that occurs, uh, the plan is um, approved uh, 
uh, at that point pending the uh, integration of their comments. Uh, and then once we get those comments finalized, you'll have a fully completed and approved uh, open space and recreation plan. Uh, in, in the next um, 30 days, one of the things we've talked about uh, with the core team members is that there are a few items. Uh, all the content is in this draft, but we still need to get some letters of endorsement from various boards and committees, uh, which we'll be trying to gather up um, over the next 30 days as well so we can submit a pretty well fully complete with all letters and all, all um, I's and T's dotted and crossed to get across to DCS for their review. Okay, so bottom line, Josh, everybody has about 30 days or so to get you their comments in. We're gonna compile those, make whatever adjustments are necessary, then submit it to uh, state. Yes, much, much more succinct way to say all that. I'm following through on this because I know this is being recorded and some people want to might jump back and ask some questions and watch the whole record. I want to make it clear what the deadlines are. So thank you. Thank you. So Josh, if people want to hand in um, comments, I, I was just answering one question on this. They can send their comments to me at Al Hershey, um, Al Hershey at Walpole wapol-ma.gov, or they can send them to, to you and your email address is, yes. where can you get that? Yeah, oh, you can. there it is, great. I, I, would, I would agree with that, Landis. I think that Landis and I will coordinate any comments that we receive, we'll share them between ourselves so that we're all aware of what's going on. Um, but you can also send comments to myself uh, at jfiala, F-I-A-L-A, at mapc.org and I'll put that in the chat as well if people want to grab that. Um, so either either of the emails or both uh, we'll, we'll take a look at them all uh, and basically compile all the comments we receive and then we'll be addressing them um, as one big you know I will be addressing them at the end of the month when we get all of the comments we're going to receive uh, and decide how to uh, get them best uh, incorporated. So Josh, if that's about it, if no one has any follow-up questions, I know we still have about 10 minutes, but that's it. I'm, I'm fine if we end this now. I think this was a good session and I appreciate it. I appreciate everyone joining us this evening. And uh, I agree. Uh, so I guess I'll do, I'll do one last call if there are any other comments or questions. Okay, so I will uh, thank, you, thank you all again for your participation in this process. Thank you again, uh, core team members and leadership of the town. Um, and uh, stay tuned, please do grab, grab the report, take the time to take a look and then send your comments in to Landis and myself. Uh, we appreciate you joining us this evening and or viewing the recording of our presentation. So uh, we look forward to your comments. Great. Thanks, Josh. Really, really nice job you did on the draft. Thanks, Josh. Great job. Great job, Landis, for spearheading us on our end. Appreciate it, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you all. Okay. Thanks. Good night, everyone.